Today we have why you should never, ever, ever consider plagiarism. Hey everybody, and welcome to After Chat. Uh, today we have our Thursday news segment. As you can see, I am here by myself as Ryan has already taken off for his 4th of July holiday to go up into the woods and go camping. Uh, I'm not going to have him call in via Skype or anything like that. So we'll jump right into the news. Uh, as, as you've noticed, our short site, our short format here, we have gone to a, you know, every day something different. So Monday and Thursday, we're going to be our big heavy news days. So this is our Thursday news. Photographer Doug Gordon has once again been accused of plagiarism. Uh, a couple months ago, this guy was caught plagiarizing, and he's like, oh, you know, I didn't, it's, it's, you know, it was a mistake, and this and that, and everyone kind of let him go for it but it looks like he's at it again. Apparently, what he's done is he's taken the About Us page from a marketing firm that he used to work with and basically changed where they are a marketing firm, changed it to his, his own name, his studio's name, and basically changed all the words to be photography related. And in doing so, it's basically ripped off their, their About Us page for his studio. And I'll put, a, a, I'll put the picture up on the blog because Somebody actually printed out the two pages, or screen capped the two pages, and highlighted the exact wording that's the same. It's definitely worth taking a look at. Uh, so I'll put that up on the blog. He just doesn't know when to stop. He, he just apparently doesn't want to do his own work anymore. Even the other photographers who came to his defense the first time, they decided, no, we're not going to come back and watch your back this time. You've gone too far. You've done too much. We can't, you know, we let you get away with saying, we, I made a mistake once. You don't get to say, oh, I made a mistake again. It's the exact same mistake. Sorry, buddy. E even when your friends are turning against you, you, you know you've screwed up. Also this week, there's a new multiplayer PC game called Paparazzi uh, that's hitting Kickstarter. It's a type of shooter game it is a two player we say multiplayer it's actually two players that is multiple players so I'll give them that player one is the celebrity who is trying to run around town without getting their picture taken and player two is the paparazzi now it's an interesting setup because this is the paparazzi you're in an aerial view looking down and as a celebrity you're trying to duck behind buildings and not get your picture taken so it looks like it'd be really interesting the main reason they're on Kickstarter is because so far they've only developed two levels and one playable character. They'd like to expand beyond that, but they are basically got to be able to fund themselves while they finish putting the game out, which is exactly what Kickstarter is for. So I'll put a link up to the Kickstarter. You can run over there, give them money. Uh, looks like it's actually going to be kind of fun. It's got old school, uh, they say 8-bit graphics. It really looks more like Atari 2600 graphics. So it is absolutely hilarious to watch the little... They, they just made some animated GIFs, and that's absolutely funny to watch those. Also this week, Canon has been approved for a new patent for a new sensor type that is not just the current three layers that are in their cameras now, but actually five layers to light sensitivity on the camera. The new patent includes a UV layer and an IR layer in addition to the red, blue, and green layers that they already use. Basically, they claim that it gives them more accurate color through skin tones and more definition in highlights. So that looks like a huge boost and it, Canon is really just kind of knocking things out right now with their new dual pixel technology and the, you know getting ready to announce the 70 Mark II and now they've got this new patent. Uh, looks like they're just pushing the envelope where they can and not by just adding more megapixels to a sensor. Now one thing this is going to do and the people who have seen some of the information on this, and people who are way more knowledgeable than I am, say it's going to require a whole new rewrite of the raw file format. Because instead of just having three channels, it's going to have five channels of data, which I'm really curious to see how that's going to play out. I really want to see what you're going to be able to do with two more layers of data. You know, even if they're not in the normal visual spectrum for us, they are for the lens, they are for the sensor. I'm really curious what, the, what this is going to do and something I'm going to keep following and I'll keep bringing up. Um, if you're curious about the patent, I'll put a link to that in, in the description below as well. Sigma is offering a try before you buy program on their uh, DP2 Quattro. 
This is a very interesting camera. I, we haven't brought it up before because it was, on the more money than brain scale, it was up there with the Leica T, uh, even though the price point was much lower, so it probably wouldn't have scored quite so high. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll score it on Tuesday and, and put it up on the big board. Um, but what they've decided to do, because this is the first camera with their new, what is this, Fulvian sensor, that they are going to allow certain shops and certain photographers to try it before being asked to throw down their thousand dollars to buy it. Uh, it is effectively a 24 millimeter camera. Prime lens, one lens on this new sensor. Uh, the camera body does look pretty cool. It looks like it could be very comfortable. It's got a, an interesting shape. Uh, it's actually kind of similar to the Leica T, but not hewn out of a solid chunk of aluminum. Basically, there's not much more to it than that. Some shops will have them available for you to grab. Some photographers will get them, and Sigma just wants to get it out there and get it in people's hands. All right, so if you are a GoPro enthusiast, and I know a few people who watch this are, um, in addition to the Hexo Plus drone we talked about earlier this week, uh, there is another new item that you should be watching out for for your extreme sporting happiness. Anyone who's used a GoPro knows that they have some inherent limits. There's, besides the fact that it's a single lens, it's an ultra wide angle. Uh, it also has no control for things like exposure or adjusting anything until you get to post. And so you could be, and I, I know people who have skied down mountains, gotten all the way to the bottom, watched the video and saw that 90% of it was blown out and they really weren't all that happy with it. Um, well, good news for these guys. Lee's Filters has put together their new Bug and Bug Plus filter set. These are available through their website. Um, the Bug and Bug Plus are for the Hero 3 and Hero 3 Plus, respectively. And they come in two different kits. They have an Adventurer's Kit and an Undersea Kit. Uh, this is actually really, really interesting because the, it's a kit that attaches to the case of the GoPro, and then you slide your filter into it. Actually, you put your filter in and then attach it to the GoPro so that it can't come off, because obviously you don't want it to come off if you're bouncing around and running around and whatnot. Uh, the Adventurer's Kit includes a three-stop neutral density filter and a three-stop neutral density gradiated filter, which you can then mount either, you know, gradient from the top down or the bottom up, because they're not square. These are actually um, rectangular pieces, oops, that's a rectangle, that you, that when you put them in. So you can't, you know, put it left to right or anything. I think most people would put it top down. And also, the Adventures Kit comes with a circular polarizer. I'm not entirely sure how you would tune that in, because again, it's a, it's a rectangle. It, it's not like the ones you can put on your, your lens hood and you can, or in your lens and just twist it. In addition to this, you're gonna have in a, the undersea kit which has a blue water filter and a green water filter, which when I first saw the picture and I hadn't finished reading that far down the article yet, I was like, why is there a red and a purple filter? But that's, you know, the red and purple are there to offset the blue and the green in the water. So you get really clear, white balanced properly shots on, even though you're still underwater. In the press release that announced all this also, um, Lees has said they will put out more filters for these in the future. So it looks like it's gonna be a new market for people using GoPros is these gonna be add-on accessories like this. So it's gonna be something to watch out for there. And one last thing for news this week is I've seen this in 50 places and I don't get it. So someone please fill me in in the comments. Um, apparently Apple is killing a program they have called Aperture. You think I would be in tune with this, seeing so this is Aperture Chat, and my studio is called Aperture to Pixels. Not tied to that at all whatsoever. No freaking clue what's going on here. So, I've tried to dig into this a little bit. Looks like Aperture was a photo editing software that Apple developed, and people liked it. I've never seen anyone use it personally. No photographer I know uses it that has, that has shown me. Everyone uses Lightroom or they use Photo Mechanic and Photoshop tied together. So if someone could enlighten to me as to why it's a big deal that Apple's shutting down a piece of software that I've never heard of, uh, please explain this to me in, in the comments. The only thing I've seen that makes me curious why anyone would use it at all is that 
people said it was tied into their photo streams or their iCloud photos. But if it's a pro level editing software, well, why do you care about the pictures you're taking off your iPhone? I mean, I've done a little bit like that, but no, nothing to, that I'd sell. I don't know. Maybe I just jumped on Lightroom super early and I just don't get it. Any, anything's possible, I guess. So please, somebody, clue me in here. I, I'm just, I'd, I'd love to have that discussion with somebody as to why Apple killing Aperture is a big deal. All right, now it's Thursday, which means that tomorrow should be our game and challenge day, but tomorrow's the 4th of July. So instead, what I'm gonna do is take the day off, as Ryan's already taken the day off, and we'll get back to you on Monday. But before we go, I do wanna let you know that up on AfterChat.com, I have put up a little tutorial on how to get great fireworks shots. So make sure you run over there. I'll make sure there's a link in the description. In fact, it'll be the first link in the description because that's where I want go, you to go before you look at any of these news articles. And go check out my tutorial on taking fireworks photographs. Uh, there are a lot of references to specific things around Providence and Pawtucket uh, as I use reference points. Uh, don't worry about those. It just helps tell the story. The rest of it is very, very applicable. The TLDR version is at the bottom in case you just want to jump down to that and just say, okay, just tell me what to put my camera in and, and make it happen. And on that note, I have no pen to throw at the camera today, so I'll see you on Monday. <laughs>